November 19th meeting of the Acton Conservation Commission. Uh, do not have any formal minutes from the previous meeting, so we can't go about, uh, you know, certifying those. Looking forward to bringing in a couple of new members. Ooh. Bill coming in? Yep. Oh, Wes is coming in. You bring Bill too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was Bill out there with you? Okay. Wes, how are you, sir? I'm doing it. Good to see you. Got back up in there with Hannah yesterday morning. And oh, I thought that was your car down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's... Did find a few more graves associated with that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, here we go. That's part of our conversation. I'm dying yeah, to know if you did any, uh, I, I any research on that. I didn't do any more research, but I did. Uh, I went up there and walked it a little bit. Oh, boy, we're going to have a football here. What's almost. that? I almost have a yeah. football. Yeah. Did you already have start? You want to review the walk that we Yep. Well, I didn't know if that would just be something that would be called part of old business. Yeah. Okay. So should we just move right into that then, I guess, without the minutes? Um, since the last meeting, we've had another walkout on the Old Town Farm property. I went back and looked at the calendar. I think that was on the 24th. Would be the Thursday. I think it was on the Thursday. October 24th. Yep. Uh, so we had myself, Bill, Wes, and Mike. And me. Well, and Denise, sorry about that. <laughs> and her husband. And, uh, and her husband. The husband, yes, we're going to put the husband, yeah. too. Um, so we had a good group, and it, it familiarized um, some of our new board members and family members with the property. Um, looked around out there. I think we have, you know, gotten a location of what could be an old cemetery. Don't know if it's part of the poor farm cemetery, some unmarked stuff that may or may not mean anything. We've got our best man on it right now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hopefully he'll come by something on that. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that. I suppose we can, you know, touch base on that right now before we move into just some other procedural stuff that I've gone over with Jen in the meantime. So do we have anything to, you know, add or just go over to put out there to the public on the, the walk from someone besides me? <laughs> hey, I think we, we looked at the the lot in in and reference the management plan yep. and what some of the uh, goals and uh, they were that you had written in the plan as it related to those spots on the ground so that was that was very helpful so we had walked out um a past the old homestead at one point in time talking of a couple of different forest stands there uh out on one of the old gravel excavation roads that took us back out into some of the wetlands which gave us an idea of the layout of that and you know some of the conservation values that those hold and how they plan discuss some of those things to do things not to do options with those acres and uh, then we moved more over onto the upland western side of the property talked a little forestry over there again as it related to the plan and then looked around a little bit and that near the westerly line was where we may have you know found some evidence of an old cemetery that we'll keep researching so that was a good find for sure and i and i think um you know some of our new members and family of the new members have got a pretty good idea what's happening out there and is that something you guys are going to relay to the cemetery committee I figured we'd let Wes do a little research first because okay. again we're not sure whether I mean not, not to be crude in any way but for all I know it could have been something you don't want to jump the gun you know what I mean yeah there was even a question we want to make sure that it is uh, documented and located properly it's but not laid out also, it's not laid out like a traditional family cemetery where you'd have generations in lines or, or, or you, quite often you can you get a sense of the family history in an old cemetery but that one seems to be linear it, it was linear straight small up, graves, unmarked, straight yeah. up and down mm. and there's two lines of them in there could it be there's, from the, the it could be farm? it could be you know but i'd like to know where the 
Aaron Hubbard that had the pro the father was who died in 1814 where he's buried because you know if he's buried on that lot that would sort of throw <laughs> throw a little curve into that you know yeah. but um, well that that could be part of part of my line of questioning for you as the historian on this would be um, could that be some function of the poor farm portion of the cemetery? Like, I don't know who would have lived there or whether there would, the house was occupied during its public ownership. Yeah, or, uh, so if, if Hubbard's had a cemetery separate from that, that it might be more the one that Bill and you were thinking of being located a little closer toward the homestead, then this may be something different, perhaps? I don't know. I'm I, I almost think that what was up on that corner is what Olive thought was a town farm. Cemetery. Gotcha. Because mm -hmm. because there was pink pink ribbons and that's what she did with it. You know. Yeah. I don't know if I could ever get Roby or somebody else that went up there with her at the time. <laughs> you know? yeah. But it, you know. But, but uh, it's it'd be nice to know who's in there. You For know, sure. If we could yeah. ever find a reference to it, but there doesn't seem to be any reference to that cemetery in deeds. Gotcha. Just. That was a very old piece of the town <laughs> early on. As I said, this, this, you know, both on both sides of the town farm road. Mm -hmm. So it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to get a sense of the history of what it was before the town picked it up, as, even though they picked it up as early as the 18, you know, in, in the 1830s. But uh, the, the road that goes back to the Lincoln School, you know, and the access to that, or multiple accesses to that town mm -hmm. farm for whatever purposes, uh, is is of interest too, you know. Correct. Yep. You know, because it it looks like that was used. <coughs> and, the road. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not sure. The, relative to the, how the Hubbards broke that plot plot up, you know, the old maps of the town show a Hubbard south of the town farm property, and there is a nice that is a nice flat piece of ground south of the town farm. Once you get back up on that rise, that's mm -hmm. looks like it was fairly good agricultural land at one time in there, and. Um, so it's interesting. It's interesting, and I notice that some of the bedrock that's related to the silver mines crops out south of the town property. Some of that same bedrock is in there, you know. So, so that that's a piece of it, you know. And we knew that there was old mines north of the county farm, county road, that was right up in there. Yep. Right. North yeah. of Milton Mills, exactly. Right. I'm intrigued by if we could ever find out when that gravel was removed. You know that. You know, and they get back into the records to see. What, uh, I suspect in the 1940s, but it. You know, because to get a sense of what that gravel did for those wetlands early on. Right now, it seems as though the Beavers is doing much to, to maintain the wetlands as, as the input is. You know, but to, to, to get a sense of the geology of what underlies that wetland to begin with you know, because of the primary feed there is down that drainage for sure and, yep. so you know what what was what was taken out for gravel and when just to get a sense of it because it, it was fairly high mm -hmm. it did take a quantity out of it right yep all right <coughs> anything else on the walk questions or comments Okay. Um, since the last meeting, I've continued to talk with Jen, you know, procedurally about what we have upcoming for the next town meeting in June. And um, she had put some comments to the lawyer to look at the warrant article of the last June's meeting and came back with the comment that the, uh, in the warrant article, which commissioned the management plan that was written and submitted, the language also discussed and was approved to have any proceeds that were A, left over from the money appropriated for the plan and from any subsequent harvesting that may go on on that property into the forest reserve account for other conservation purposes. So that would not have to be recreated. Um, we did have the question, you and I, Dave, about you know moving 
the mechanism or the need for which money is moved from year to year still has to be discussed a little bit. I'm not familiar with how that works or if it goes into that account, whether it needs a, an article to move it into the next year. Well, I think there's two issues that we're going to have. Um, I believe one of them is that we don't have a policy on selling the wood. Correct. Okay. And the other issue is whether or not, uh, like you said, the article, whether or not it will roll over every year, whether or not you'd have to vote on it. And a lot of them you do. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, you know, like at the end of your uh, the town warrant and town meeting, you'll have um, a list of, you know, road, budget stuff, um, all the departments, and whether or not they, they roll over any of that money. So it's a carrying forward of the it's balance. It's a carrying forward. I think you, every year you'd have to do that, but on the article itself, um, I think um, if you, we got to write it in a certain way so that stays with that that certain, you know, for the forestry conservation itself. But I still think, I might be wrong on this, that's when the lawyer will have to let us know, but um, I still think every year you'd still have to vote to carry the money. Uh, and that, that, that's just you know procedure. It's a housekeeping system. Yeah. Right. Well, just toward the keeping. toward the purpose, uh, you made a comment partway through your statement there as well too, and it was brought about that there wasn't anything specific to that article that which commissioned the plan and spoke for the funding though, which quote unquote accepted or deemed. Um, the plan to be enacted upon. Yeah. So the comment behind that was to bring that back to most appropriately town meeting again in June. Yeah. So again, part of what I'm looking at here, unless we've got some other ideas as to how that would work, you know, probably best for town consensus to have the same style of uh, uh, public hearings and, and, you know, we've already had some walks out on the property and I'm sure there will be more beforehand. But uh, hearings and working backwards from June to devise the Warren article in order to have that put in front of the town in June. Yeah. So, because we're, right now I believe at the last um, last town meeting we had, uh, we'll just use the the road budget, the yep. roads, because what they did is they um, they voted in a policy uh, in, the, in the warrant there. They voted in the warrant to to sell off stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, such as road equipment and stuff like that. And I think we're gonna have to do the same thing for the, the timber. Right. And then at the same time, when we do that, then we can write in, a, uh, write in the warrant there where the funds to be allocated to, what account. So um, that'll have to be ashed out. Yep. yep. Again, so that's that's kind of the overall procedure of what I see happening between now and, and the June meeting. Yep. Um, again, just familiarizing the townspeople, similar to the, what we did. Well, the Hebo Hybo property back in the day was an approval from selectmen. We're not looking to have that be the process now. We're looking to have it be at town meeting. So again, um, you know, more of a open forum. Um, you know, the scenario was always public, but obviously, again. Uh, yeah, and, and it's going to work sort of out. Thing, yeah. I think it'll work out for the town's favor for the simple reason that they know why this process is happening, yep. where the money is going to eventually go to yep. at some point. Because I'm sure, you know, this committee here, um, conservation, we've got conservation stuff going in town that more more so now than we ever did. Right. You know, with three rivers and all that stuff going on, um, it would probably be best off for the town to have it at town meeting so they know exactly what's happening. Exactly. And the process by which the plan is adopted and therefore acted upon is discussed because, again, a management plan, and I've mentioned this before, mention it again for Andy if he's not familiar with the process, but a forest management plan is a working document and, it, and it's based upon the um, natural resource itself, but obviously the goals of the landowner. And if the landowner itself in this case is the town, then a forester's guidelines of what he sees out there on the face of the earth is the inventory and it's recommended and I can put forth some ideas of forest management, but you need to also say forest management toward what. So we've had different public hearings previous to that where we had had the um, inventory and data so-called of the plan put together, but not had recommendations within the plan written yet. That was when one of the previous open uh, public hearings I had had or open houses or discussions we had had was to bring about, you know, what do we see as a special uh, about this section of the property? Well, this is the wading bird habitat. So we see this as being 
protected in this manner. Therefore, a management guideline for that acre might point us in this direction. Or if this acre had more potential for timber, then maybe this um, you know, guideline or, or management recommendation might point in a different direction. So those guidelines are devised by the town and then the recommendations are brought about in the prescription section of the plan, which is what was submitted. So again, that's you know, brought about and then discussed. And, and again, when we have, uh, you know, public hearings and things like that can be talked about specifically as well as, uh, you know, different field trips out there in the <clears throat> public, um, you know, to just show different acres and different uh, harvest techniques of what a pre and a post might look like or something like that as part of these public hearings on other backed and woodlots having been treated similarly. Uh, but I, I think you have to back up just a little bit and talk about what are your what are the goals out there for sure you know wildlife soil conservation timber harvesting recreation all those mm -hmm. uh, like the goat hill piece you know that's primarily that's a different the, scenario than this rec than exactly. uh, recreation yep. so um, that acre with the wading bird habitat maybe that is good for wildlife so is that a goal of, of the town for future planning and and how do you operate that area to right. enhance those that habitat and uh, to meet that goal so mm -hmm. it, i think it goes back to the the goal your first statement in your plan you know what are the the goals i think that has to be uh, discussed with the town expounded on yep for sure and, and you know maybe the money from the timber isn't the big goal no you know, at all. maybe yeah. it is we need recreational Correct. areas in yep. town that the public can use rather than yeah, i think on on my side of it on the selectman and i can't speak for the other two because i'm just the liaison but um on our side of it would obviously we want to protect you know the environment and make sure that we're doing whatever um, on my side of it i look at you know whatever we do get for proceeds from this hot timber harvest and you know after the fact mm -hmm. then where does that money get directed you know and 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 this committee here should be able to um with enough you know involvement and all that um have a goal of where where those funds could go mm -hmm. You know that one, that and, and that's that's something that we need for town meeting. <clears throat> and that helps at town meeting, so people have an idea of what's what the next step is, and uh, and what our goals are. So, does that mean that at at this town meeting, rather than say uh, we want to harvest the woodlot, should there be a discussion about what are the goals for the woodlot? <clears throat> there should be a plan. We should well, I would say that the goals need to be before if the town meeting is looking to approve and or enact act on the plan then the public hearings I would see previous to that would be so what that's generate that's that. going to be the vehicle to get those goals <clears throat> correct in my mind input correct. on those goals is that is it, what's going to end up happening and um I've never had a preconceived notion that there was going to be X amount of dollars or cents or this tree or that tree on any given acre of that property. But having said that, if authorization to do anything on that property needs to come, it needs to come at town meeting. And if that's the case, then again, that begets the process of backing off from town meeting and working backwards to get to that point. Yeah. So if the adoption and enacting of that plan is from that June date, then the goals specifically, if they haven't already been talked about of this acre or that acre, need to be at whatever public hearings happen before that. Yep, in my mind. But shouldn't we have somewhat of an outline of a plan so then the public has something to start from to look at, like what ideas of what we'd like to see? Well, and the plan- can comment on it. I mean, just to leave it completely open, no, well, that's what the plan, the plan is already written toward the basic goals as given to me by the town and the committee previous to now. Okay. But for example, if you don't know um, that there is this on this acre versus that on that acre until you have actually written the plan and done the inventory on the property, again, the working document nature of it is going to kick in a little bit and say that what I put on that plan or in that plan in paragraph three on line two might not necessarily be something that 
is, so to speak, law by the time you enact it a year later. There can be health changes in the forest. There can be somewhat goal changes from the landowners now that you know that this is in relation to that or this is this is location or goal uh, is more appropriate to that acre than maybe it was written in before. So we already have that document is down. That That's the, the plan itself. Okay, and that, uh, I'm trying, I read it a while ago, and that addresses all the things we're talking about, like recreation, wildlife. So that's what well, we again, want you input from. Correct. So. You can't address everything on every acre and have given direction at the same time, I guess is the way to put it. So in having some direction in the goals after the inventory but before the prescription phase of that plan was what I was referring to by saying the description portion of each forest stand is this in my mind and, and this is what I call it this is the this is the what the description of stand one for example is the what you have in stand one mm -hmm. you have this asset you have you know this much timber this um, wildlife conservation value is present in this stand or what it would happen to be and then that's when we had a couple of small meetings about what would one do or what value should we be looking at for that acre and then the prescription was written for that acre toward those ends so it was always um, without going back to forestry 101 the a forester is managing all of the associated resources that go along with the forest not just the trees themselves but if you're giving recommendations it's not like i would put an entire encyclopedia in front of someone and say well, Here's that's what i'm saying more of an outline so the general public like to give them this document would be kind of overwhelming and they might not understand mm -hmm. it i'm talking about like you want outline. a summary yep just uh, a summary of what yeah. you're going to sure. do sure okay yeah. what are those goals right. Yeah. right we feel we can we can um harvest this by improving this section here, saving this here, da 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 da, da and a, a, sh a, a shorter version. <laughs> yep, so basically, boil, okay. so a good idea would be previous to a public hearing, yep. would be to just boil that right down to a couple of pages and, with a map. And something. to define yeah. what these things are. Conservation is, while like recreation consists of this, so. Maybe a fun exercise would be to take a look at what the comprehensive plan wanted relative to the conservation of the town and see how that this lot may bring some of that about when was that written <laughs> go ahead bill you you're in the original <laughs> well i don't know what the <laughs> most recent one was i don't remember <laughs> the but uh, i think that the original one was approved in 1990. Yeah. oh yeah, okay. and, and, and it, the town set its goals in well, how five years. Was it, it wasn't that too long ago. It's been revised since 1990. Yeah, it's been revised yeah. several I think times. So, but, yeah. Right, but, but the, the original one paid, uh, paid a huge part into conservation because yeah. that was the way all of wanted it. Yeah. 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 But if you looked at that, if each of us looked at that and said, okay, how does that? Mm -hmm. to those long-term goals and the revised right and how this lot may help bring those about of yeah. the conservation on this lot it just so it's you know you're looking at it from the inside out mm -hmm. as a forest or maybe it's, as a conservation look person outside yeah. look it out yeah. from the outside in sure yeah. and and get a get a different different long-term perspective on it that's why i'd like to go back and see the history of that wetland yeah. You know, if you even looked at that wetland in the 1974 map, which is around here somewhere in this building, <laughs> that, that Bernard Walker and Frere and, and other people did. You know, those were good people and they were interesting maps. And I've got, I got to give the admonishment that that was put into place before the state determined what a hydrophyte was <laughs> or the role of a hydrophyte relative to wetlands. But that was back when, it, when they set aside the wetlands in the town by right. given elevation. You know, they, they, the basic rule was take, take wherever it was wet and go 20 feet above it and protect everything within that 20 feet. You know, so, which was really, a, in some ways, you could see it was very positive. Because, you know, if you, if you go in and take the gravel away, you've changed the hydrology, so you change the nature of the plant. But you still have, you still have the topographical wetland, right. even though it's not functioning as well because you, you removed you altered it. You've altered it. So what I'd like to know is if we can get a sense of it, 
is what alteration has a town done to the natural resources that were here to begin with that maybe the beaver is trying to <laughs> trying to work against us <laughs> All the the beavers have done. you get my point <laughs> right because <laughs> they may not have been there until the beavers made it <laughs> well so. it's different because at one point they blew up the beaver <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, it drained and drained it all out, and and um, at all this house they lost water. They lost their water because well, it's no different than the Patriot Day storm when that blew that whole yeah. dam out. I mean, that yeah. yeah, you know why? Why was that such a destructive event? You know, that was a, the question. Mm. Why did that do as much damage as it did? I mean, it obviously made the town pound look real great. All right, now. Steve, is there a... Yeah, you're right, the pictures look almost exactly the same. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are there copies of that plan streaming. readily yeah. available? Jen's got yeah, them all yeah. digitally yeah. as well. I'll get a copy from her because I'd like to look at that. Yep. Oh, she can email it to you. So okay. Well, yeah, great. she's got everything digitally. I've got hard copies, but she's got it strict digital and can reproduce it a lot easier than I yep. can. <laughs> But yeah, looking at that, like like Wes was saying, looking at the comprehensive plan and how it dovetails into this plan, I think would be a good idea too. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And and um, and then again, this is unique in the sense that it, it was town found. There was a history to it that uh, which the comprehensive plan did did address, not just ecological history, but the sense of the town in terms of historic importance. And um, so. You know, it, it, it's funny how that piece of land figures into the Lincoln School as being preserved, and that the people that lived here probably all went to the <laughs> Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln to the School. You yeah. know, it's so it, there's, there's history here. You know. Well, it's amazing how many of the major roads in town ran through basically that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's you know we. Acton is so rich in water resources. Mm. And yet, those water resources are protected by uplands. And this is really a good slice of upland. It does have some of the high saddle ridge, you know. You know, it, it, it does have some of the high ground in town, and yet it's even fed by higher ground, you know. And, and then it's got that medium gradient wetland there. And, and then it's got an interesting bedrock geology underneath it, too. You know, there's, there's, there's a reason that the the, uh, the waters that are in that wetland connect to what the school is drawing on. You know, there are, there are bedrock connectivities there. Not that I've seen those maps in a long time, but I know there's lineaments that cross that wetland in both directions. When did you when did you estimate that the gravel was taken out of those? I'm I'm going to say in the 1940s. Areas, in the 40s. Yeah, I don't think the technology existed to take it out in wholesale much prior to the. 20s and 30s, and the, it has the same look that they did on up by Miller's Corner and elsewhere, where they would take below the grade. You know, they'd go down to actually in the dry season and go down below the water table. And well, I had talked to which one of the Wallaces. Go ahead. Has the house closest up toward the end of County Road? That would be um, all the Fords parked in the driveway. Yeah, <laughs> not Clint. <laughs> Yeah, that's Glenn, isn't it? It is Glenn. Glenn. It is yeah. Glenn. Yeah. No, he, uh, when I had talked to him, because his property abuts the town farm in there, right near this possible cemetery, he, so he has the abutting piece to it. And um, he had made mention about some of the how-tos and wherefores, or whatever one would say, of the graveling of the town farm okay. last it was done. So he would be someone good to ask. Yeah, I, I, there's table. people that must. I would even think, you know, anybody that worked with good and Right. would have heard stories of when that was taken out so it might be second hand information Bob, but Bob, it should be yeah, better than nothing like you know that. I was thinking Bob when I said that you know were, and even Mervyn <laughs> yeah. you know they both they both worked for for good and, you know I'm sure if Roger Lasky was around <laughs> they could tell you a little more but or your father your grandfather <laughs> but you can see based on you know the way that those ridges transition where the gravel wasn't extracted right one would think that those ridges were similar in contour mm -hmm. before it was excavated yeah. 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 oh right off the sides of the excavation you mean the, the yeah the humps yeah like where it ends yep. on each side of the road exactly yeah I know there are, there are places where the 1919 topo maps are extremely good, but I'm not sure I've ever seen one for here. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I know in, there are areas where, the, like down around Vaughn Woods in the barracks, 
they're much more accurate than the existing topics <laughs> that they actually show more. <laughs> you know, I don't know if they're more accurate in terms of actual elevations, but they're more accurate in terms of the detail. You know, gotcha. more detail on them. And um, I don't know what the blister, if there's blister rust maps in Acton that was picked up in that. Those uh, would probably be. They they would be they would be at the time the gravel was extracted or prior to. Because it would be in the 30s, because okay. they did that, well, that up would into be something the 60s. I can check at NRCS. So you, I mean, you know, back you, in the day, those were held by um, I know, Ellen Scarborough. I know there's some what about, what about marvelous town reports. The blist, they used to send people out to get get the currents out because they they thought they were hard to, damaging to the white pines, and I guess they were. They they carried an intermediate stage of a, a blister rust, so they hired people to, basically during the depression years to go out and rip them up. I know my, my mother's uncle did it in Lebanon, and Lebanon has some good blister rust maps. The town of Farmington's absolutely phenomenal in New Hampshire. They show town, town graves plot, plots, and it, they estimate percentage of hardwood softwoods. I mean, they, 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 that hydrology, they, they, depending on how, how curious the guy wanted to make a map. You know, but the, the blister rust are uh, um, marvelous resources if you can find them on the area that you're yep. concerned with. Well, yeah, I can check in with NRCS on that. I've got a couple of plans on the hopper for those guys to approve, so I've got business to deal with with those guys in Scarborough. Okay. They haven't been digitized or anything like that, but I don't that would have been the last batch of true, like, Sewell style. Or prior, prior to, you know, other than some individual geologists that went through and did some work, you, you know, it, it's pretty hard to get an interpretive, you know, lay of the land. But there are, there are times, even, you know, there are, there are, th there are features in Acton that have appeared in C.T. Jackson's maps, which was done in the 1820s, <laughs> 1830s, you know. There was, there's, there's pieces of analysis of bedrock and other things that, were, that you picked up little pieces of it here and there. But, and, um, so you even might get an interest if you looked at the tax maps that the town has in the vault of 1909 where they actually define the abutters for each parcel. Sometimes you get a sense of where the fields were. You know, they, well, they remember, I thought it was interesting that the, 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 the previous version of the town map, even compared to the current one, I know, I've seen some old where ones. I found the property lines to meet in the current oh, yeah. one. Well, that's, that's one of the things I, I mentioned earlier, is if you look at the, the uh, town report, uh, if you look at back some of the old, old ones, I've seen some really old ones where they actually have description of hiring people to go do certain projects where they may have actually got some sort of description back in, say, if you can yeah. estimate the time in the 1940s where the, they may have extracted extracted dirt out of that section there yeah, to build I, roads. I, I looked at it for references to the town farm itself, but I didn't get yep. graveling on the roads. But um, we do know when it was hayed last, and yeah. <laughs> what the relative amount of hay they got out of it, that the income that came off the hay, that was in the, that got cool. into the town records. Yeah. You know, um, the question you had about the other town farm, which was basically Warren's property, you know, the property that Warren lived on, that now is part of the herds, Yep. But that was a, that was picked up in the it was a, belonged to a person named Hunter that sold it to the town, and um, so both towns were go, both farms were being harvested, and both both records appear in the town town report. So the, there's probably more that can be gleaned there. You just you know just have to take the time to go through them. So. Um do you have anything, Dave, as an idea of, again, looking at the timeline, working backwards again from June? What, like, are we eminently coming upon something that we need to have in the hopper right now for X date, do you think, or? I don't, I, like, so procedurally, we're working on some stuff internally with, you know, making sure we have our quorum and our minutes and our secretaries and getting the procedure within the committee taken care of. You're talking again, about a warrant article? Working backwards from the yeah. warrant article, if we need X amount of, you know, hearings and X amount of warrant article um, amendments or, you know, the process by which you create a warrant article is a lengthy one for sure. I mean, the Warren article, I don't I don't believe that's going to be a real big deal. Um, I, I mean, obviously, uh, we need the committee to actually put one together, what, what they think that we ought to put on, so we have the selectmen. I believe we try well, to get example, out. For, I forgive me for interrupting. Yeah. So, for example, if the meeting is in June, then yeah. when, when, just in trying to get some of the major dates on the calendar, when is the creation of the warrant article to be put to the town? 
I believe we try to get, um, well, we normally try to get like our budgets in by like, if I don't hold me to this, no, no, I I'm believe just, it's in February, end of February, something right. like that. Yeah. So that would be the same idea as you'd probably want to have your warrant articles, you know, something to put forward uh, so we can get it on the, the June warrant and probably by um, uh, March, I would think. Okay. I would you think. Yeah, yeah, you got it, you know, because the problem is, is you you have to be able to present, you know, that article to the finance committee and everything else. So, um, but I would have to check on that and see really what the procedure is okay. and when well, we again, have, like to to have to have that in. Knowing that we have this working backwards from June scenario in front of us, I want to make sure that we don't just, you know, putz along, I guess, to find out that now we're up against it. I think we got plenty of time. Um, I mean, honestly, we have an article that's already been, you know, that's in the books. Right. I think it's just pretty much revising that article up to what we need. Um, you know, we just have to have time to um, get the committees to look at it. Um, the selectmen obviously have to you know, look at it. And uh, in the meantime, it, by doing that, we should be able to, between, say, March, to June, that's when you know if you want to have your your hearings, you know, uh, for this this project, I would think there'd be plenty of time. Right. Well, for example, <laughs> the warrant article itself wouldn't change, even if there were public hearings after the warrant article itself were created. Right. I mean, like for example, if the article talked about the adoption and enacting of the plan. Yeah then the hearings previous to that wouldn't necessarily change the article. It's just still the adoption of the plan. You're just working toward building consensus with what the plan is meant to say and to do. But I, th I still Again, think the working I document think, I think, you, I think what you have to do at town meeting, because you, you have to amend the, the uh, article that's already there to accept, you know, for selling off the wood and all that. So you want to include that into that article, you would have to vote that in before you can vote the plan in. Right. Correct? Because you, uh, you don't yeah, want to put the cart before the horse and, uh, and vote in the plan, and can't then, sell the wood. <laughs> then turn around and yeah, not vote in the article to sell the wood and everything else right, to right. get the permission to do that. Because I think that's the only thing that I, 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 when we were talking about it, we did talk about, we, uh, we did mention it at a selectman's meeting there a couple of weeks ago, I believe. Um, and, um, and I talked to Jen about it when we were talking about the lawyer <clears throat> and there was no purchase sale right. policy for the, for the wood. Of course not. So that's yeah. what you want to do that all at the same time. You want to do that at the beginning of the, of the uh, uh, town meeting and then you can accept the plan afterwards. Um, but at the same time, you want to have your hearings before that to get everybody so they're on the same page so you don't overload everybody in town. Well, meeting. again, the consensus building is something that's going to happen either yeah. way, but the, the specific wording of an article as needs to be gotten to the town by March or whatever you say would be wouldn't necessarily change the yeah. the warning. And, and like I said, the March. Um, let me let me talk to our our treasurer and everything and, and our town administrator to make sure that that's that's when we want the, yep. want these articles in. Again, it's all just in working backwards from June. Is all. There was an article in 2006 on appropriating $300 that was harvested probably off the town forest for a conservation committee. For conservation, ed education, and recreational committees, that was 40, uh, Article 47, 2006. You might want to just look at that to see how they they worded that. Yeah. I, I I'm. I mean, apologize for not being up, but I I, yeah. I I I I did have a file on the articles relative to this committee from the 1970s on at one point. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think the, but most of those articles that I, I've seen in the town um, at town meeting yeah. was usually to allocate money to continue the process, but there was nothing there that really explained how to the monies were to be spent. Correct. Yep. Right, mm -hmm. right. But, but that one did say for recreation and education. Yeah. It, it, specific details, I'm not sure, you, you know. That's for the 300. Yeah, that was for the 300. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, but the, the but difference with that, point. with that article is, it's actually given an actual amount. Yeah. Where if this plan goes through and say, we don't have an actual amount, um, then that money would go 
surplus or wherever. I think what you guys want to do is you want to put it towards a, an actual conservation account, right? Is that, is that what your plans are? Right. Well, again, I not to say that we wouldn't um, yeah. revisit it within the warrant article, but yeah. what Jen did say is you don't need to reinvent the wheel on that part of it. Okay. So it may be that we did put the cart before the horse, yeah. but I'm trying to think of, of, a, of a metaphor to go along with it. <laughs> if the cart's already before the horse and we already have the mechanism to accept the uh, the monies, yeah. then her implication was, and, and this isn't me quoting her, but we just need to now have the process by which we create those funds. Yeah which would be the adoption of the plan and the enacting of it. So it may not necessarily be that we need to revisit the whole thing within this one more article that we're creating. It may just be the, the plan itself, yep. adoption. I'm not sure, but we can look at that. Yep. Um, so that, that really is all the old business that I've got, you know, previous to today. Um, again, any feedback, any contact, please bring my way. The only new business again is the <laughs> secretary. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, we need to figure that's, some way of doing this. That's typically what you do on these committees, and Andy, you know just as well as anybody, you've been on a bunch of them, which has typically you, you vote in your secretary or right. your head and all that. So we would need, we just need a nomination for secretary and then. <laughs> you either accept or decline the nomination. I've been waiting for a volunteer, but haven't seen one yet. So I'm hoping. That what did I tell you? You said you, you weren't. You just said you said you weren't he ready. He said after yet. a couple meetings, it's been. So, so actually, right now, <laughs> these guys over here can nominate him right now. I know that's Put him true. on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be something that, uh, yeah. So. Hoping for the volunteer process, but or the nomination, not to come from me. I'm not a volunteer. Because I'll, give you, I'll give you your space. <laughs> yes. I can't nominate. Are we going to make a nomination? Make it. Okay, I nominate. That's fine. Mike Benjamin? That's fine. <laughs> Anyone second? I will second. <laughs> yes, there we go. Nice. You guys are going to vote on that? We need a vote. All those in favor. Do you accept the nomination? <laughs> you know it was coming sooner or later. I was waiting for the volunteer, but I do apologize. Thank you. Yeah. So do we have to come up with some kind of plan now on how we're going to accomplish what we just discussed? Because if we only meet once a month, that's only a couple, a couple of meetings, meetings. Yep. away. For sure. Um, like, do we have like a workshop or would we try to accomplish it at a meeting? Well, I think the next step that we kind of talked about was the so-called outline of the plan is that what we're shooting yes, for? Yes, I can present to the public like a lot. You could present this this document, yep. but um, and it's something like you can post, you know, and yep. so the public. I think but. probably my suggestion would be to have another meeting, get an outline of where you want to roll with this, okay, and then at some point um, we can have. Um, meet with the other two select board members and kind of see what direction we can we can make that how we can make this work um you know a couple of meetings down the road um obviously you know like i said you know we're what november december you know you ain't got a whole lot of meetings but i think at some point you'd you'd want to have the other two selectmen involved so we can you know push this warrant thing through you know get to a point where it's we can accept it yep <clears throat> It's just my suggestion so if, if we had a, a whiteboard being an educator mm -hmm. years ago you know oh, yes. we put everything on the whiteboard but you know I have a timeline June you know go go down by the months or start at November and go up to the, and then for each month have a goal mm -hmm. that this committee would meet or try to meet so you know mm -hmm. then 
if you wanted your public meetings in March, mm -hmm. that would be under that month, and then talk to Jen and see what dates would be good, and if we have them here or if we have them on the woodlot yep. in March, it might be a little difficult to for the weather-wise, but mm -hmm. not as bad as it would be later. What's that? Not as bad as it would be later. <clears throat> because it would be wetter and there would be bugs. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you get, you don't. I don't believe you have to have your meat. As long as the article you come up with your article that you want to uh, you know, submit mm -hmm. okay you can have your meetings up to june right well that's that's kind of what i was trying to imply a minute ago is the the workshop portion of what the actual an action of the plan is going to look like do this here do that there is something that can be worked upon all the way up until that time so the the idea behind the the workshopping um is more toward what is done, whereas mm -hmm. the concept behind the timeline applies a little bit more toward the creation of the warrant article itself. Yeah. So that's, yes, that's you want to make sure that you want to make sure that you do have the consensus before the meeting so that it is all completed by June for sure. But the idea behind saying that you necessarily have got to have all of your workshops mm -hmm. previous to somehow, you know, as long, March as or something as long like as that. the warrant article is submitted to the selectmen so we can get it through the other committees and get it in the book mm -hmm. then you can have you can, your, can still continue to work on you can still have your your uh, meetings with the public and everything before the the june four yeah, yeah. correct yep okay. so the because we will have seasonal considerations for sure yep when is the town meeting is it june it's like the 16th or i'm not quite sure exact date but it's on a, it's on a saturday after the election so it'd be the second week second saturday i believe 13th <clears throat> sounds right yeah don't hold me to that either nope. we're a little ways away from that so <laughs> <laughs> but typically it's the second week i believe okay. after the election yeah Okay. So my understanding that we may be gearing ourselves towards some type of workshop to do this summary, to summarize what's in the plan and how we're going to kind of promote this or sell yep. it to the public? Correct. So if that's something we need to have, um, well, is that something as the plan creator you're looking to have me just drop the initial outline for again if it's looked to be a, as a summary of the existing plan then me doing the quote unquote boiling it down first is kind of would make sense right yeah i think, I, I think uh, what you yeah, want to do is it. pretty much boil that down condense it a little bit and then at it, our next meeting uh you guys sit down because i'm all i am i don't know if i'm supposed to be even talking i'm supposed yeah, to be no, sleaze gotcha. on, but, uh, i have a tendency to do that but uh <laughs> um but um the, the next meeting you know we have to condense what you've got yep. go through that whole whole thing and then we can sit you guys can sit down and start you know trying to figure out your article mm -hmm. you know and in the meantime we've got a month before then Jen can give us you know, with the advice from the lawyer and everything else of how how to structure that procedurally speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'm boiling. So we'll, we'll have that for next meeting. Correct. And then and the next then, meeting could be kind of like a workshop. Yeah, I don't think we're talking about our goals. Goal. Right. We can have it during one of our meetings, or or were you thinking that the public would be invited for that? Well, public can come to this. Well, again, public I wouldn't have a public invited, yet but. until you get your warrant article yeah. okay. figured out, get it condensed, meet with the select board, the other the other couple select board members, so they're all on board. Then you start having your public meetings, and you can have your public meetings even after we've you figured out the warrant article, yeah. Yeah. so you don't cram it all at once. And you're better off, I think. You're better off to have the public meetings closer to the town meeting, so it's more. Okay. You know, fresh, fresh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So, the agenda item for next month would be to review your summarization. Sure. You yep. Put me on the spot. I'm going to put you. I on can the do show. that. <laughs> work in progress. It's a working document. That'll be a working document yeah. too. And honestly, the more you can drag this out, I think the 
the better. Not not cramming it all into one one thing because we want to make sure this is right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what ends up happening, I think, is that you can talk of. Um, you know, I want to do this or you want to do that. And, and after a while, you start to see a consensus and you start to see answers evolving as you work into the process. So coming into it with some preconceived notion of it's going to go like this is kind of folly anyway, most of the time. So you're right. The, the idea about it being fresh, a little closer to time, allowing for refinement as you go not thinking you're going to come up with a final draft in in you know december's meeting kind of thing is kind of silly yep okay any other new business what's what's happening with um goat hill and the the project up there i wanted to ask for that too I have not talked with Carl so out of the loop with some of this stuff. I just oh, they, I mean, that didn't some walked of that up there the other week. I, did, I walked up there this past week. Yeah. yeah, so it's all they've got all these switchbacks and stuff now. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it really is wheelchair accessible, but certainly. Um, well, we just signed a, a thing there allowing him to put in for a grant. Um, I put out the bid right. for. Um, I saw a company to come in and put those handicap accessible switchbacks and all that in. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where that's gone gone from here. Um, because Mark, I said Mark or Carl, Carl, Carl. Yeah, I haven't. Ha I've had very little other than knowledge of what's going on up there to know currently. That was. I know there's Carl's you know, been some time extend, You know, looking for some more grant money and all that too. So. Yeah, because it's, it's very involved to make it ADA compliant. Very tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we've done is, um, what we signed on was to put it out for a certain, you have to be certified and whatever to do that. So it's, it's a small group of people, there's no doubt, but um, you know, hopefully they'll get some feedback and some pricing and this and that and see exactly what kind of money is going to be spent. Anything else? Do we have a motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I second it. <laughs> All in favor. Good.